Japan's land is relatively small and the country is considered to be poor in natural resources. However, it is the sixth largest maritime nation when all its territorial seas and exclusive economic zones are combined. Recent studies have found the mineral resources such as seafloor hydrothermal deposits, ferromanganese crusts, manganese nodules and ray-rich mud lie under the seafloor around Japan. Yet, no fuel-fledged investigations on ocean resources have been conducted to date. Today, I'd like to show you the Integrated Ocean Resources Surveying System, the world's leading system that Japan has developed to search for and characterize ocean resources, particularly seafloor hydrothermal activity. To begin with, let me interview Ayu, a member of the development team of this system, on what the Integrated Ocean Resources Surveying System is. Yes, Sasha, any ocean resources survey project starts with an extremely important step that we cannot omit. The very first step we take is to narrow down potential areas of interest using mineral formation process model based on scientific research. The waters surrounding Japan are collectively 12 times larger than the land area of Japan. We cannot possibly just go out there and blindly wander about in search of resources. Before setting out, we first figure out the formation processes of resources to determine where we might most likely find them. Resource survey projects on shore employ geological maps and remote sensing techniques to narrow down prospective sites. Ocean resource surveying cannot do the same, as light and electromagnetic waves do not travel far in seawater. If we went looking for resources without adequate planning, it would entail enormous cost and immeasurable labor. Therefore, efficient and low-cost method to survey ocean resources are required and have been incorporated into the Integrated Ocean Resources Surveying System. By the way, why do those resources exist under the seabelt? That's a very good question. It is a mystery if you think about why a certain resource exists in a certain place. Recent investigations have identified structures created through hydrothermal activity called chimneys in waters near Okinawa. A further investigation in the vicinity of these chimneys will tell us why certain metro resources exist exactly there, or the formation process as we call it. But how can we know the formation process by investigating around hot water and chimneys? We have so far learned that metals produced in magma deep down under the seafloor travel upwards to the seafloor and are ejected out into the sea. Similar hydrothermal activity is thought to be present in approximately 1,000 places on the seabed around the world. I see. If we know how much hydrothermal activity is created, we will be able to narrow down potential areas with resources. That's right. That is why we use chimneys as signs of hydrothermal activity in our effort to discover metal resources that extensive lie under the seabed and remain concealed down there. So you are surveying not just resources exposed on the seabed, but also ones underneath it. Yes, research on the formation processes of ocean resources is a cycle of hypotheses and studies. The results from these are important inputs for making decisions at various points regarding whether to proceed to the next step or to give up and move on to the next area. These investigations based on the Integrated Ocean Resources Surveying System are carried out by companies in the private sector. The technical objectives include 1. Provide technologies and methodologies to narrow down potential areas for investigation to one ten thousandth of the whole. 2. Develop equipment that allows efficient and low-cost investigations at water depths of down to 2,000 meters. And three, develop investigative methods to discover concealed hydrothermal deposits up to a depth of 30 meters below the seabed. 
To achieve these objectives, further development of technologies is needed to narrow down potential waters step-by-step step from a regional survey to a semi-detailed survey, and then to a detailed survey in the prospective areas identified based on the research concerning the resources formation processes. Can you now tell us about the specific methods used in the Integrated Ocean Resources Surveying System? So once prospective waters for a hydrothermal deposit survey are determined, what kind of survey activities do you perform? The next step is a regional survey. We collect seafloor topographic data that provides the basic information on the waters to be investigated. To do so, we use acoustic waves to obtain topographic data on the seabed, because light and electromagnetic waves, which are used in territorial survey projects, cannot reach to those depths. Wow! You are observing the seabed in real time from the ship. I understand that this makes it possible to investigate the target areas effectively. Yes. Now, what comes next? The next step is a semi-detailed survey. We investigate the place where hydrothermal plumes are detected to ascertain the extent of the resources. Ayu, what is a hydrothermal plume? Hydrothermal plumes are, so to say, underwater geysers of hot water or hot gas. Chimneys are also distributed around these plumes. I see. That's why they may serve as markers in your survey. That's right, Sasha. Now, things get a little complicated from here. Metal minerals under the seabed are sort of in the state of batteries, meaning that they have an electrical potential different from the surrounding areas. We investigate such anomalies. Additionally, a formation containing metal minerals is characterized by higher electrical conductivity than the surrounding seawater. We make use of these characteristics to detect singularities. Hmm, it's complicated indeed. Perhaps, simply put, by capturing the characteristics of metal minerals, you can survey the spread of minerals under the ocean floor. Is that it? Exactly, Sasha. We also survey the geological structure under the seabed using a robot called an Autonomous Underwater Vehicle, AUV, which carries probing sensors. Now that you have narrowed down areas of interest by understanding the extent of peculiar formations under the seafloor, what is the next step? In the final stage, a detailed survey, we develop a three-dimensional distribution of seafloor resources and the several areas deemed to have the highest resource potential as a result of the phase narrowing down process. This is how we survey the three-dimensional geometry of subseafloor formations by using seismic wave generators set up on the seafloor. How are the resources distributed in this graphic? We believe there are resources above the void. We further narrow down the areas more precisely by conducting a gravity survey using an unmanned exploration platform called a remotely operated vehicle, ROV. A formation containing metal resources is denser than other formations around it. So there is a difference in gravity. The gravity survey is considered effective for detecting metal resources concealed under the seabed. So this survey provides more accurate subsea floor information because the investigation takes place on the actual seafloor, closer to the resources themselves. Yes, if an area seems to be resource rich at the end of this detailed survey, we will pass the baton to resource developers. So now I'd like to interview Mr. Nobuo Kawaii from J. Maris, which is actually an organization in the private sector promoting this survey technology and has captured some samples using it. Hi, Mr. Kawaii. Hi, thank you. Nice meeting you. So, Mr. Kawaii, I heard that you actually used the Integrated Ocean Resources Surveying System and successfully obtained 
samples. Could you tell how it went? Yes. Already we told the, uh, this system, so we are checking the, the white sea area, sea yes. water area, and uh, we will try to point like a more prospective point. Yes. So from uh, regional survey to uh, detailed survey. Right. Uh, so and finally, yes. we have to check our result. Mm -hmm. Actual rock samples. I see. We have to drill mm -hmm. and result. We decided this location, mm -hmm. green location, by using our data, mm -hmm. 3D data, but it's really difficult uh, to check the details. Yes. So we developed our 3D visualization system yes. to evaluate this 3D data mm -hmm. and type this green location. Can I see the uh, visual? Yes, of course. Okay, let's check it out. So this is uh, our the 3D visualization system. Wow. So what do you know by this? Okay, now we can understand the, the uh, sea bottom topography. Yes. And uh, we will go and dive into the sub sea bottom. And now I'm diving. Oh, look down. And now we're, whoa, oops. Okay, just coming. You, you can see uh, like a red and black color. Yes, uh-huh. It's a kind of the log surface. Uh-huh. So the color changes are the, uh, some the surfaces. Some difference I see. of the physical properties. I see. And I see also green color. Green color is, we estimate this is the actual, our target resources. I see. This is amazing. You will see and you will predict what is under the seabed before you actually drill it. Of course, we have been uh, using this system by geological uh, yeah, academic knowledge based on this one, and uh, we will evaluate the possibility of the natural resources. Amazing. Sasha, yes. have you enjoyed our 3D visualization yes. system? Yes, very much. We have developed another new function. Now you are here, mm -hmm. but another technician can enter into the same data. So maybe we can cooperate all together all around the world to develop the uh, technology or find uh, something new in the seabed or under the seabed. By using this system. Wow, that's amazing. So Mr. Kawai, as a player of the uh, private sector, how do you expect this uh, technology to further develop in the future? We have joined this project as uh, one private sector for uh, using this system. Yes. And we will uh, apply this system as uh, technical services for the Japanese uh, farms. Yes. But now, uh, this resource is really hard for the private sector to make a development stage. Mm -hmm. Only exploration, uh, survey stage, we can supply this technology. Yes. Not only a private sector, but also some governmental organization mm -hmm. and some overseas uh, farms, if they need. And some uh, uh, Pacific small island country, yes. they need this. They have no technology and some uh, they are no resources, so yes. uh, we can uh, offer this technology for total services. I see the future is bright. What is your impression, Sasha? Well, I learned today that planning ahead very well is a shortcut, after all, to effective and low-cost survey at sea, as it is far too difficult to investigate the entirety of the vast ocean. I was once again impressed with Japan's amazing capabilities in performing of short surveys. At this point, let me introduce some of the new technologies developed through joint efforts between the public and the private sector in response to the increasing demand for higher efficiency and lower cost in ocean research survey. This technology enables the simultaneous operation of multiple AUVs autonomous underwater vehicles. Traditionally, AUVs have been deployed one at a time, but the simultaneous use of multiple AUVs drastically improves work efficiency. Wow, you can survey many things at once with that. The next technology is high-speed satellite communication. With this new satellite communication technology, we can now have a video conference connecting an onshore party and the ship via the internet. I heard that it was hard to send even a single high-resolution photo in the past. What a technological advance! This video cam uses sound sources to capture 3D images. So it can take 3D images even in turbid water, where normal optical cameras cannot see anything. 
Wow, that's really convenient for underwater operations. Possible uses for these technologies are not confined to ocean resources survey, but are expected to also be used in other areas. Japan has been developing new technologies one after another. I really hope that these technologies will be made use of in other projects around the world. There is one important thing we must keep in mind that is the impact on the environment. The environment? Yes. This system to survey ocean resources is the first of its kind in the world. That means there were or are no guidelines in Japan whatsoever regarding how to assess the deep sea environmental impact of an ocean resources survey project. So we had to develop an assessment methodology from scratch. In traditional environmental impact assessments, large size flora and fauna serve as the main indicators of environmental changes. And thus, the scope of assessments are often confined only to them. To evaluate and predict ecological changes in the ocean environment at an early stage, we need to include into the scope of the analysis microorganism populations that are present in all oceanic areas and are sensitive to environmental changes. So developing a survey method to discover resources isn't enough. That's right. Equally importantly, we need to be mindful of environmental protection. To make the integrated ocean resources surveying system widely used in the world, we have to overcome some social challenges, such as setting international standards on the environmental impact assessments. So this new survey technology cares about not only the humans living on shore, but creatures in the ocean. Japan has developed the Integrated Ocean Resources Surveying System ahead of the rest of the world. To tell the truth, this project has an alias, the Jipangu in the Ocean Project. Japan was once called Jipangu and reported as the land of gold with tremendous quantities of resources. Today, that Jipangu is looking into the resources underneath the seabed. The use of the Integrated Ocean Resources Surveying System is expected to provide the foothold for full-scale survey of ocean resources.